remember when I was a kid um, talking about a coming ice age, and there was, you know, this talk about us running out of oil at some point that was going to create a huge crisis. State Representative Daryl Metcalf has a well documented history of opinions on climate change. He's been quoted as saying the effects of climate change are chicken little fear mongering, something he still does today. Rep Metcalf has served coal and oil rich Butler County for 23 years. He's also in his second term as the chair for the House Environmental Resources and Energy Committee, playing a role in what legally shapes our environmental future. And as a politician, he is a trusted voice of the constituents who voted for him. There are no climate deniers. Everybody recognizes there's climate change. Now, what is the cause of that climate change? And what's the solution if we need to have one um, to deal with any consequences to climate change? Rep Metcalf said back in 2019 when taking over as chair that he would allow, quote, good Republican legislation to come to a vote. And as of October, 27 items have come to a vote, all Republican. The narrative that's been created to try and demonize people that um, are opposed to ultimately the solution that they're pushing for increased regressive taxation on our citizens to um, have them entrusted with um, what they're claiming is a solution. Metcalf's solution, a team of appointed experts brought in to testify on proposed legislation. When you're going to develop a policy, you should be taking into consideration good science. And that's why we've had experts come before the committee to talk about what's going on within our atmosphere, what's happening with climate in Pennsylvania. Back in June, those experts appointed by Metcalf included testimony from Gregory Whitestone, Dr. David Legates, and Dr. Patrick Michaels. Whitestone represents the CO2 coalition, funded by the energy industry and those who oppose climate change mitigation. Legates now works for the Heartland Institute, a think tank backed by those who oppose a scientific consensus on climate change. Michaels also receives funding from the oil and gas industry, among other organizations. And Representative Metcalf's biggest donors as recently as last year continue to be oil and gas companies, including Marathon, Exxon, and Chesapeake. That influence who you bring into the committee. And by that I mean these experts who are funded by oil and gas, as opposed to somebody who may be more solar progressive, more wind progressive, to kind of hear that? that, that well, my, my, my position is that this false narrative that's been created um, to tell people that they need to suffer because humanity is responsible for all the climate change that we see, that they're going to be the end of themselves and that they should suffer through regressive tax policies and they should trust these people in the government um, that they should trust them with implementing with their money the projects that will actually facilitate the solution. Um, so I'm going to look for folks that actually are more aligned with my understanding of what's occurring. Many like Metcalf don't believe the U.S. should further climate change legislation when other countries aren't making the same effort. China is continuing to burn coal. 50% of the world's coal, I believe, now that they're burning. So while people want us to stop burning coal, they're putting us at a disadvantage. Legitimate point, China has increased output to record levels as America has reduced it. But it points to a bigger question as we see the evidence mounting. Which do we put first? Economic or environmental policy to shape our future? Being on the wrong side of science is bad for the country. We should be doing everything we can to be good stewards of our environment, to make sure that we're using the energy we produce efficiently, effectively, which is what we've been doing, which is why you've seen CO2 reductions in Pennsylvania. One good steward of the environment is Eric Souder. He's a Lancaster County native and founder of Regional. That organization is helping shape the roles rural and urban communities play in our environment. He's not interested in the politics of Harrisburg or Washington. Souder says he knows what's right in front of him. I've had a number of farmers that have uh, told me about how they've seen the changes. One farmer said things aren't just different from when my grandfather farmed this land. They're different from when I took over 10 years ago. And he sees a clear path forward. Climate solutions are really the, the angle and the way that we need to approach any kind of climate action because it empowers us to see things that we can actually do. And uh, often they are win-win. A win for both science and the wallet. Some of those solutions are the ways that farmers are taking care of, of soil health and 
um, storing carbon in soils, the way that they're managing um, plants and animals, integrating them into the land as well. So in addition to the ecological benefits, many farmers are able to reduce costs of their operation um, and add new revenue as well. Perhaps an opportunity for our area to not just play catch up, but take the lead. I think Lancaster is positioned to be a climate leader. It's a place that is known for its ruralness and its urbanness and places that I that embody both of those identities are right now missing from the national climate conversation. And so I think it's, it's a real role that Lancaster can fill um, and, and prove something really important to the nation. As the debate continues on how much and how quickly we should transition to cleaner forms of energy, that doesn't have to stop what you do in your community. I've traveled across South Central Pennsylvania, meeting residents who are doing more and more unconventional things to help clean their environment. You'll be able to see their stories on air and online at fox43.com. From the Fox 43 weather team and all of us at Fox 43 News, thank you for joining us.